Obviously, every Mets fan is going to talk about, you know, the crazy stretch of games starting with the doubleheader on September 30th, going all the way through the playoffs no matter how far they get as to how crazy everything has been. But in this video, I think what we need to do is appreciate the Mets, not just for, you know, the front of the doubleheader, but, you know, going through, like, some of their craziest victories throughout the year. Now, to prevent this video from being long, I am going to start, you know, at the turnaround. I know that it's going to upset some people with me starting a video when the Mets finally began to turn it around. My logic for doing so is that... You know, I didn't want to make a video that was this long. They fell to 22 and 33 before the players only meeting, and then were 24 and 35. So they had a record, a winning percentage of just 40.7% through 59 games. And then this is where, you know, their turnaround starts. Obviously, yes, they had some col uh, huge collapses, but they've also had some absolutely crazy wins. And even on our footage for them, I might make a compilation montage later. Um, I want to go over some, um, you know, of the craziest moments as a Mets fan in this journey up. So rock bottom, it's June 3rd, you're waking up, it's 24 and 35 and also, um, a pretty hot day in the city, I remember. Um, first day with a low temperature in the 70s for the city, so, um, so obviously conveniently as we see... You know, a big weather change in the city as the high reached 86 that day. Warmest day so far, but the coldest that the Mets, um, you know, would be in terms of, well, I guess how cooked they were. Like, this is probably the worst that their playoff chances were at 24 and 35. Maybe 22 and 33 was worse. I still think 24 and 35 was worse. They swept the Nationals, but they didn't really have any crazy games in the winning streak over the Nationals. But June 9th was a crazy win over the Phillies in London. You lost game one. You absolutely had to win this game. You fell behind 3 nothing, And yet in the sixth inning, the uh, Mets took a 3-3 three -to -three lead. Uh, I mean, tied at 3-3. Three -three, and I'm pretty sure it's in the sixth inning. Um, maybe the fifth. But I'm pretty sure it's the sixth. Then the Phillies jump in front to a 4-3 lead. And, you know, at multiple points, they had a win percentage of over 90%. The Mets said not so fast. They rallied in the top of the ninth to score three runs to score a 6-4 to four lead. As if it wasn't crazy enough, you'd think that this game would now be a lock for the Mets. But they let the bases get loaded and um, also forced in a run to make it 6-5. to five. At this point, the chances of the Phillies won was over half. You had bases loaded and only one out. Nick Castellanos was at bat. His bat exploded, and Luis Torrens was able to get the ball, step on a plate, and get the runner out at home, and then get Castellanos out of first plate for the first ever game-ending 2-3 double play, a very rare double play. And the Mets held on and won 6-5. And, you know, what could have been game of the year had it occurred later. Obviously, they have a heartbreaking loss to the Marlins on June 11th, Grimmins was at the first pitch on June 12th, and on the 13th, we had a J.D. Martinez walk-off home run to finally get themselves in only seven games under 500. And, you know, the big thing about the home run was that, um, was that this is where, like, the Mets' momentum started to shift in their favor because they were down 2-1 to one heading into the ninth, and they came back and won 3-2 over the Miami Marlins to secure a series win. They then swept the Padres and then took two out of three from the Rangers. June 18th was particularly crazy because they fell behind 6-2 to two after five innings, and the game looked all but over, and it looked like a surefire win for the Texas Rangers as Luis Severino got shelled. However, the Mets were able to slowly rally together, and they wound, wound up winning the game 7-6. to six. Pretty impressive to come back from that, especially on the road to come back from being down 6-2 to two, that deep into the game, and yet they were able to do so. Um, you then have, you know, the Yankees games, though the craziest one I'm going to talk about, what happened in the second series. And then, you know, like, like another um, spectacular game for the Mets was, you know, the Nationals. Because even though they lost, split the series, you know, like, you know, like the Nationals made a five-run comeback. 
The Mets made two comebacks down two, two runs, and they won both of those games in extra innings. They um, won the first game 9-7, and they won the second game 7-2. So this, you know, what the second game they were down to nothing and they won seven two in extras. The first game was crazier because you because they were down to nothing, took a three to two lead and got tied at three to three. You had a runner on third base, but got stranded at third base. And if they had crossed the plate, the Nationals would have walked it off with a four to three victory. But instead, the Mets hold on, um, and in extra innings they, get, they take a commanding nine to three lead. With home runs by both J.D. Martinez and Jose Iglesias. At the time, I thought they wouldn't need anything else. But with the bullpen being shattered thanks to the suspension of Edwin Diaz, they, the Nationals actually fought back and made it 9-7 to with the tying run on base and a winning run at the plate. However, the Mets struck out the batter to prevent any further damage and keep the score at 9-7 to final. Again, a crazy crazy game um both in you know regular innings and extra innings and and, and then you have also the july 7th game where the mets looked like they were in a pitcher stool from the start fell behind two to one but were able to um in the ninth inning with bases loaded and two outs lindor was called to the plate and he hit a single to make it three to two and at, and the Mets were able to then hold on and secure the victory. Um, you know, that was a crazy game. And honestly, the Mets just had, you know, a lot of crazy wins during this time. Um, July 23rd against the Yankees. The Mets took a, um, the Mets took, uh, well, the Mets took a 1-0 deficit early on, but then they made the lead 3-1. to then they were able to the, the Yankees were able to cut the three and two. The reason why this game was so crazy is because of what happened at the end. The Mets had to use Jake Diekman, one of the worst relievers in the sports, um, to get the outs. And Juan Soto was walked. Aaron Judge was at, was at the plate where obviously there's a very big risk of him hitting a walk-off home run, and you can't intentionally walk him because then you allow the tying run to be in scoring position with only one out. So Mendoza trusted Diekman to get Aaron Judge out, and it actually worked. Aaron Judge strikes out looking. Um, in a season that was full of just downright crazy events throughout the whole way, this might have been the most random thing because he froze up at the plate, and um, if... And when I do this highlight video later, maybe I'll include some early season things too. If he hit his swings at that, that's likely going past the Harlem River into Manhattan for a Yankees walk-off. But instead, the Mets held on and won the game. July 25th, another crazy game against the Atlanta Braves, where, where it's tied after two after Lindor homers off of Chris Sale. And the Mets were able to win it as the, um, as the, uh, what, what's it called? As the right fielder overruns Jeff McNeil's fly ball for a 3-2 to two walk-off victory. Of course, we do have to mention that, that after the 26th, from the 26th into August 15th, and arguably as late as the, um, you know, despite some highlights, arguably as late as the 28th, the Mets fell into a tailspin. I say that because he went 7-11 from um, the 27th of July to the 15th of August. And then once he gets the 20th of August, he went from being in the playoffs at 1.5 games to being out of it by four. Even though they actually improved with, uh, I want to say, 8-6 and six record after that. And, you know, they obviously had a tough time. They had really tough losses against the Angels in a lost series. They... Um, you know, against the against the Rockies, they uh, you know, they could only take two out of three and had some struggles in that series. Um, they just got shellacked by the Mariners and had a very hard time against the Athletics. In one of those games, they even blew a five nothing lead at the three at home and lost seven to six when four hundred and twenty five pitchers 
were thrown out in what could arguably be the worst pitching performance in MLB history and was the longest game of the pitch clock era because the pitching was pitiful. Despite it being in, in a pitch clock era, the game took 3 hours and 45 minutes, starting at 110, not ending until 455. I know games during the camp day where they start at 110, usually by 4 o'clock when they get on the bus to go home, the result is either known or maybe it's not known, but I know on the way home. This game, I did not know what the result was until I was already back home. And it was just a crazy long game because the pitching was pitiful in that game. It was a game where a 5 nothing lead just couldn't feel comfortable just because of how much Quintana was struggling. And sure enough, Quintana did not pitch well and neither did the Relievers. And it turned into a Mets loss. August 17th, I was at that game. Uh, Luis Severino throws the Mets' first complete game shutout since the 23rd of April in 2021. Um, pitching for a full nine innings and allowing zero runs and only four hits. August 18th is a tough loss for the Mets. August 19th, Francisco Alvarez walks it off after he swings on a 3-0 and count. Very risky to do, especially when you're a batter as poor as Alvarez. And yet it works out, and the Mets walk it off. August 20th, a really tough loss for the Mets. August 21st, they respond with Jesse Winker walking off the Orioles again to win the series in a walk-off that I think was even crazier than the Alvarez walk-off. Of course, they have tough losses, 25th and 28th. But on the 29th, Iglesias comes through in a clutch as the Mets secure a 3-2 victory in their final push. This is the start of their you know, nine-game win streak. Win number eight of the streak included Mark Vientos homering in the bottom of the 10th so the Mets could walk off the Reds. And what if... It, actually, no, it wasn't the last Mets walk-off. We saw the um, New York Mets come through again with two comeback wins in the Blue Jays trailing after seven. In the top of the eighth on the game against the ninth, the, you know, Mets were struggling against the Blue Jays and blew a one nothing lead. Miscommunication between the pitchers and the catchers allowed them to get a 3-2 lead, which they wound up holding on to. Even crazier was the 11th, where Bowden Francis takes a no-hit bid through eight innings by the top of the ninth, first batter up, Francisco Lindor homers. He ties the game at one, and he forces the Blue Jays to go to the bullpen. The bullpen explodes, and the Mets take a 6-1 to lead hanging into the bottom of the ninth. The Blue Jays did not go down without a fight, though. They made it 6-2 to and had two runners on base, Forcing the Mets to use Edwin Diaz on the first pitch. It's a fly out and the inning is over and the Mets win. Um, after some tough losses to the Phillies, they respond with Sterling Marte walking it off. Then scored 10 runs in three consecutive games in the first time in franchise history. And that was another come from behind win because middle of the eighth, the Mets were trailing one nothing before Iglesias came through. And then Marte walked it off in the 10th. As for the uh, game between, um, you know, like on the 22nd, the last game was the field for the playoffs. That was crazy too. The ball uh, hit off the bag and stayed in the infield on a failed pickoff attempt, which kept the runner straight at third. The Mets won that game 2-1. to one. Um the 30th, of course, a doubleheader. You're trailing 3 nothing after seven innings, and then you come back and take a 6-3 to three lead in the top of the eighth. That's a, a huge rally. Only for the Braves to m- 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 mount a rally of their own and take a 7-6 to six lead. But Lindor hits a 2-1 homer to take an 8-7 to seven lead, which wound up being the final score of the game. Um, in game one, and the Mets clinch a playoff berth. In the wild card round, you have the crazy fifth inning of game one, where down 4 3, Iglesias was able to reach base before, um, you know, the throw to the plate, and the Mets wound up scoring four more runs with two outs after that. In um, wild card game three, down 2 0 in the top of the ninth, Pete Alonso connects for a three run homer. And the Mets take a 3-2 to two lead when their chances of keeping the season alive at one point fell to 6%. The Mets get insurance to get 4-2. And Pete Alonso, I mean, 
I mean, David Peterson gets a double play to um, end it, end it, end, end, end a Brewer season. Um, also, the crazy eighth inning of game one of the NLDS. Game two was a really tough loss for the Mets, but game three, they get a convincing win in game four, trailing one nothing in the bottom of six. Um, Francisco Lindor hits a grand slam, and the Mets are able to win it against Philadelphia. You know, even in the NLCS, Game 2 and 5 were crazy wins where the Mets jumped out to a huge early lead. Dodgers fought back, but the Mets were able to then hold them off. So, will they be able to keep their magic going? I don't know. But it's not like the magic began on September 30th. It feels like the magic of the Mets season has been going on since the start of June. It is a completely different team than what they were in May. It is a completely different team. The Mets have not only made themselves, you know, look and act competently, but they've been looking like one of the best teams in baseball. They're in the NLCS for a reason. And they took down the Brewers and the Phillies in the process. And they're not that against the Dodgers. 19% chance to move on? Yes. But the Mets have been down to 19% chances before. Their chances to make the playoffs are about 10%, both when they were, you know, at 0-5 and, and also at 24-35. and 35. And it was 13% to make the playoffs when they were, <coughs> um, you know, at the end of August. And they still did anyway. 6% chance to make it past the wild card in the middle of the eighth inning against the Brewers in wild card game three. And yet they did so anyway. And, um, you know, made, made everyone forget about the Brewers' comeback in game two. Like, the Mets have been down here before. Can they come out of it? I don't know. But if any incarnation of Mets history can come back and be 9-3-1 to make it to the World Series, it's this year.